In addition to being, you know, uh, a writer uh, of autobiographical stories, he was kind of unwittingly uh, a historian as well. You know, he bumped into a lot of actually very famous, uh, you know, Idaho characters and stuff. In fact, in Real Stuff uh, number 12, one of my favorite stories of his, uh, he kind of starts out with uh, the story where he kind of, you know, um, back when LSD was actually legal at the time in the state of Idaho, he was tripping out on acid outside of Moscow, Idaho. And he, you know, they go, they go to, you know, uh, they go to this party, like in Spokane. Something weird happens. Uh, this woman uh, pulls a gun on him, and so, like, he, he leaves the party, walks back to Moscow. He's walking all through the night, and uh, when, he, when he gets back, when he gets into Lewiston, he's walking through Lewiston, and, like, one of uh, Senator Frank Church's aides just kind of pops out of a building and sees him walking out around and says like, hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee and a donut and meet Senator Frank Church, who was up there at the time um, campaigning for one reason or another. So we got, he came, went in at uh, Senator Frank Church, met his wife. And, you know, they were kind enough to give this hippie a, a ride back to, to Moscow, Idaho. There's a lot of history like in these, uh, in these Real Stuff comics. Um, as far as like specific Boise imagery or Idaho imagery, you know, uh, I've always had in my mind like uh, Boise in the 1950s and 60s as being like a very uh, overly sanitized and very saccharine, you know, place like, you know, where there's um, nothing really bad ever happens or goes on or anything. But and there probably was that too, to a certain extent for some people. But a lot of his stories, you know, he was a very rough and tumble uh, uh, teenager, too, you know, he and, you know, play, playing football for for Bora High School and um, there's kind of some of his show, stories show kind of a dark underbelly too, you know, um, and uh, that that was kind of something that kind of struck me. So a lot of people think that uh, you know so, uh, some of his stories are so incredible that they're uh, that they're fictions, but actually they are all uh, autobi true autobiographical stories. And um, I was even to I was even able to verify this one in particular, this one in particular called the Karma Thing, about uh, Willie Benson that uh, Dennis knew when he was going to school in, uh, um, at Bora High School, and he was kind of like this young, tough punk that always was getting in trouble with the law. And he went off to Vietnam and uh, came back and joined up with uh, the ROTC here uh, at Boise College. In 1970, it changed from Boise Junior College to Boise College. And in, uh, that year, they were inaugurating the new uh, football stadium, which was a grass field in the parking lot now, where in between the, the current Bronco Stadium and uh, the pavilion. Um, so they were going to um, parachute, the, the ROTC guys were going to parachute in the game ball, and uh, three of the guys made it down fine. Willie Benson had the, uh, the game ball, and his parachute didn't deploy, and he hit the ground and uh, bounced twice. Uh, he was in a lot of pain through the years since then. Uh, he died of a drug overdose early um, because of a, you know, an addiction to painkillers. Dennis was actually pretty good friends with um, Charles Bukowski. They used to correspond like all the time. And before he did these real stuff comic books, he published a, a free weekly, a free art weekly in uh, Seattle called the Northwest Extra. And um, Charles Bukowski contributed like a, a lot of um, uh, poems to his uh, to his newspaper. I remember once when I was writing, um, we were writing back and forth to each other. I was lamenting the fact that uh, Charles Bukowski had just recently died, and he wrote back, um, "Yeah, it's very sad, of course, but you know he left behind a lot of great work." And it's the same thing with Dennis. He left behind a lot of really, really great work.